A new family has moved into the White House. Joe Biden is waking up for his first full day as our country's president. The Biden-Harris administration is hitting the ground running after yesterday's inauguration. They're making big changes and quickly. Tracy Potts has a look at what's in store for the first 100 days. President of the United States and will the Biden administration's first full day. We're not wasting any time promising at last night's inaugural celebration to meet the moment. The pandemic, economic crisis, racial injustice, the climate crisis and threats to our very democracy. President Biden signed more than a dozen executive orders on day one ending the Muslim travel ban, stopping border wall construction, requiring masks on federal property, and rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement and World Health Organization. There's no time to start like today. More orders are coming to help schools and businesses reopen and reverse the ban on transgender persons in the military. He's already getting pushback from some Republicans. But I didn't find any of the orders that I agreed with, and I think many of the orders that he came forward with will lead to unemployment. President Biden needs Congress to pass his immigration bill, creating a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants, to approve his $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan, and to confirm his cabinet. Nominees for transportation and defense are being considered today. Do you solemnly swear? Vice President Kamala Harris promising to carry out his vision on Capitol Hill. The courage to see beyond crisis, to do what is hard, to do what is good. She's the tiebreaker in what's already shaping up to be a fierce battle in the Senate. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. So Kamala Harris is now the highest ranking woman in American history and the first black and Asian American vice president. So many people are talking about her making history from Hillary Clinton posting a photo of Harris to the San Francisco 49ers saying she's a Bay Area native, 49ers faithful, barrier breaker and Madam Vice President. Then Billie Jean King saying Kamala Harris is the first but she will not be the last. And a writer in New York sharing a message saying, listening to my son's first grade teacher talk about the inauguration and after asking why today is special, a little girl says, because we're getting our first woman vice president. Well, yesterday's events included a live streamed virtual parade across America. It featured entertainers, celebrities, and special people designated to represent each and every state. So Oregon's representatives included this guy coming up right here, Dr. Jason Campbell. You might know him better as the TikTok doc. If I can leave you with anything today, it's the idea that we need to be together apart. We need to be safe, we need a distance, but we also need to still be together. Now is not the time to, to be isolated. It's time to reach out, a time to ask for help, a time to be there for others, to give help, to lend a hand. Are members of we first met Jason uh, way back last spring, right at the beginning of the pandemic, and we've been able to stay in touch with him. And that group right there was also a part of that parade yesterday. Members from the American Side Saddle Society from Eagle Creek. So we've heard from several Portlanders about the new administration. Some are feeling really hopeful, but not everyone thinks enough is going to change. Portland saw three different rallies planned to coincide with the inauguration. Catherine Cook was at the one in Irving Park in Northeast Portland. Many here shared that just because Donald Trump is out of the White House doesn't mean their fight for racial justice is over. They say they're going to keep the new administration accountable and hold them to their campaign promises. I, I, just, I, I couldn't stop crying. Sharice Williams let it all out Wednesday morning during President Biden's inauguration speech. She says after four years of riding an emotional roller coaster, she was ready. I am so happy that our country has finally come to a place where we can try to come together. Um, Biden's message was right on, and I feel like we can move forward. No justice, no peace, no racist police. At Irving Park, the Defend Democracy Coalition put on this rally to, quote, inaugurate justice and defend black lives. Organizer Ray Austin says some of their demands for the new administration include defunding police, health care for all, and a green new deal. You know, we're celebrating the fact that Donald Trump is leaving office, but we're also standing in resistance to the fact that there's so much work that needs to be done, and we can't necessarily count on Joe Biden to do that work. In Northeast Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News.
Another group of about 150 people gathered at the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Building in Portland's South Waterfront. They were calling for ICE to be abolished. Police say some in the crowd threw rocks and eggs and vandalized the building. Federal officers declared an unlawful assembly and used tear gas and flashbangs to get those people to leave. We saw at least one arrest. Well, Portland police arrested eight people after windows got smashed at the Democratic Party of Oregon building in Northeast Portland. A group of about 100 people first gathered at Revolution Hall in Southeast and then they started marching. They were far left and anti-police with several signs that had messages like we are ungovernable. Let's get to three things to know about COVID this morning. Number one, the Oregon Health Authority saying that vaccine sites will continue to administer the Moderna doses. California paused distribution of this same batch of the vaccine over allergy concerns. According to the Oregonian, OHA says it's following guidance from the CDC, which did not recommend that health departments stop administering any of Moderna's COVID vaccine. In California, less than 10 people had an allergic reaction at the same vaccine clinic. Oregon is investigating two adverse reactions among people vaccinated from the same batch. Number two, people in all of Oregon's nursing homes have now gotten their first round of COVID vaccinations. That's great news. CVS, Walgreens, and Oregon-based Consensus Pharmacy helped get it done, covering about 8,500 residents and 12,000 caretakers and staff. So this beat the CDC's goal for the end of January. And number three, a smooth first day for the mass vaccination effort at the Oregon Convention Center. 1,500 people who are healthcare workers or part of long-term senior care had applied and were invited to get their first shots yesterday. Right now, Kaiser is running the show, but OHSU, Providence, and Legacy will join in on Monday. Even though the health systems say they have staff enough to give up to 7,500 shots a day, they don't have enough vaccine for that. So the numbers will be closer to 2,000 shots a day. And those are your three things to know. We also know this about the Powerball. Breaking Powerball news. We have a jackpot winner in Maryland, and this is a big end. A million dollar ticket was also sold right here in Oregon. So let's start with the jackpot again. The winning ticket sold in Maryland, worth more than $730 million. The winner will have the choice between taking payments over 29 years, or they can take a lump sum payout of about 546 million bucks. Again, there was a million dollar ticket sold here in Oregon. So that means someone matched five of the numbers. I can already hear Rod in the background with his hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm, was it my ticket, hmm.